Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day and thanks so much for joining me for another art video. Earlier this week, I worked on this natural scenery piece that I created by combining regular or traditional watercolor paint with watercolor pencils. A couple of weeks ago, I shared this very thorough video that's basically a watercolor pencil guide for beginners in which I explain a lot of must-know information. I share how I swatch watercolor pencils. I share must-know watercolor pencil techniques and a ton of good stuff. I would highly, highly recommend looking into that one if you haven't already. I'll make sure to leave a link to that down below in the description box. But in that video, I share how many artists like combining traditional watercolor paint with watercolor pencils because sometimes, depending on what it is that you're painting as well as the style and the effects that you're going for, bringing in regular watercolor paint can really quicken the process for you and make it easier to cover up large sections of paper quicker. Regular watercolor paint can also be a great option to quickly and easily create wet on wet effects in sections like skies and water where you want colors to blur or merge together. While you can do this with watercolor pencils, I personally find that wet on wet effects that require more water are just more easy to do with traditional paint. Not to mention you're not gonna be left with texture that watercolor pencils almost always leave behind. In that past video, I share the similarities and differences between traditional watercolor paint and watercolor pencils, so make sure to check that out. But today, I wanted to share five tips that are gonna help you integrate these two mediums in awesome ways in one same piece. Now, even though I wouldn't consider today's video to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, I have a ton of complete step-by-step -step tutorials on both mediums, which I've shared before. I'll make sure to leave links to a few of them down below in the text section of this post. And I also have many more coming your way very soon. But I do want to explain the three-part process that I went through to create this piece before sharing the five tips with you. So the first thing that I did, and that's what I'm working on right now on screen, is I did my work with my regular traditional watercolor paint and I approached this part of the process by pre-wetting individual sections with clean water before dropping in my color. And the reason why I did pre-wetting with clean water first is because I knew that this would help me arrive at nice soft blurred out effects and soft transitions between colors. Pre-wetting really helps that paper stay wet a little bit longer and I'm able to drop in a little bit more color before my paper starts to dry. Before getting started with my painting, I also decided on specific sections that I would leave with just the paint and no watercolor pencil work in them. Like for example, my sky, the farther away mountain, and the water. Those are sections that I knew since the beginning I would not be doing any watercolor pencil work in. And the reason I came up with this idea for leaving these sections with just paint in them is because A, I didn't want any further texture or detail or even contrast added into these sections. I didn't want any texture in my sky. I didn't want any texture in my water. I was happy with just the blurred out painterly effects created with the regular watercolor paint, and also the mountain in the farther away distance, I wanted to leave very light overall in value and kind of blurred out so that I can really create an illusion of depth. Usually things that are farthest away from you as the viewer of the scene are lighter in value, cooler in temperature, and are less defined, have less detail overall. And I knew that by leaving it with just paint, I would be able to achieve this illusion of believable depth. All this has to do with something called aerial perspective, which I would highly, highly recommend learning about if you're interested in improving your landscapes and scenery. I'm continuing to work on my first layer of paint all throughout here. You can see how I'm keeping everything nice and loose. And this is what I would consider to be the first layer, base layer of color that I am going to be building upon with my watercolor pencils. I'm not really interested at this point in creating lots of detail or even lots of 
definition or contrast. All I am doing is focusing on the general color shapes or color areas. I am having in mind values. So which are the lightest areas that I wanna keep with little to no paint in them or pigment in them? And which are the areas where I'm gonna be developing darker values in? And if I have a chance to drop in a little bit more of that color while that paper is still wet, I drop in a little bit of that color and start developing darker value sections. Once I had that initial layer of paint all throughout this piece, I allowed everything to dry completely. I helped myself actually with a hair dryer to make sure everything was completely bone dry before bringing in my watercolor pencils. Once everything was dry and ready for the watercolor pencils, what I did was two different phases with the watercolor pencils. So three phases in total, one with traditional paint and two with watercolor pencils. So for that first phase with the watercolor pencils, what I focused on doing was starting to add more contrast, definition, and texture into all of these largest areas in the middle ground and the foreground closer to the viewer of the scene. Essentially, everywhere except for the sky, the mountain farthest away from us, and the water. So in that first phase with the watercolor pencils, what I did was I focused on laying down a good amount of pigment in the sections in the middle ground and the foreground. And I was also focusing on layering a good amount of pigment in darkest value areas that I want to push darker values in and also start developing some amount of texture in the closest sections to the viewer. So right here, this is exactly what you're seeing me do. I am using colors that are similar to the colors that I used with my traditional watercolor paint, but this time I'm using watercolor pencils on top of that layer of paint that has already dried. So for my dirt areas, I am using the two browns that come in my Derwent watercolor pencil set, which are a lighter brown and a darker brown. And then in the plants, I'm also using the two greens that come in this set, which are a lighter green and a darker green. I'm also going to be doing some of this work with my watercolor pencils in the leaves of these trees. And for the leaves of the trees, I am going to be bringing in my yellow that comes in this set. And I'm gonna be combining that yellow with the lighter green and the darker green. All throughout this phase, I'm continuing to use circular strokes as I am laying down that pigment. And as I said before, I'm really focusing on layering the majority of that pigment and especially the darker versions of my colors in shadow areas and darker value sections. And for the lighter value sections, I'm using just the lighter color of the two and the lighter value sections also have overall a less amount of pigment in them. And this is because just like when I am working with regular watercolor paint, I'm really looking to leave a certain amount of lightness and whiteness of that paper shining through from under that pigment in lighter value sections. It's so, so important that when we're working with regular watercolor paint or watercolor pencils, that we look for ways to incorporate the whiteness and the lightness of the paper and use that lightness to help us develop lighter value sections. I really noticed that just like when I'm working with traditional watercolor paint, when I mindlessly start applying more and more color into lighter value areas with my watercolor pencils, everything ends up looking very heavy and somewhat flat. And at the very end of this phase, I'm also going to be bringing in my dark blue that comes in this watercolor pencil set to deepen and darken darkest value areas. I like using my black very minimally and I usually save it until the end just to push final darkest value areas if I need to and I feel I need to add a little bit more contrast than my dark blue or sometimes my purple allow. So if I'm able to push darker value areas with something like a dark blue or even a purple or a dark brown, I try that first. And if I need to push darks even more and create more contrast at the very end, then I bring in the black, but that is in the final phase. 
All right, so I'm almost done here with the second part of this process. I like really taking my time with this because I'm going to be activating this color once I'm done. And I like making sure that I have a good amount of pigment on my paper before bringing in my water and my paintbrush. But again, the majority of that layering is in darkest value sections. All right, so I'm almost done here with what I consider to be the second layer of pigment in this piece. And what I'm gonna be doing next is I'm gonna be bringing out my paintbrush, which I believe I use a size five round brush for this entire activation process. As I explained in my past uh, watercolor pencil guide for beginners video, you really don't need very much water at all to activate watercolor pencil. So I'm just bringing in a little bit of water at a time and really helping myself with my absorbent towel to um, have a hold of water control and make sure that I'm not losing control or bringing out way too much water onto my paper. I also make sure to work from lighter sections and make my way towards darker sections because if I do it the other way around, I risk pulling that darker color into lighter value areas and I risk darkening lighter value areas. And I also make sure to rinse out my paintbrush bristles in between my different colors. So if I'm working on a green section, I make sure to rinse out all of that green from my paintbrush bristles before jumping into a brown section and so on and so forth. Hopefully you can see how by bringing in a little bit of water and activating that color from my watercolor pencils, that color becomes darker and more vibrant in some cases. And of course, because I just added in watercolor pencil into certain middle ground sections and foreground sections, basically everywhere except for the sky, the mountain in the faraway distance and the water, I am just activating and doing brush work in these areas. And as I am doing this activation and using my brush, I am still just having in mind the different value sections so that I can make sure not to bring in or pull in too much of that color into lighter value areas where I wanna keep lights and with a small amount of pigment in them. And as I am using my paintbrush, I'm also bringing to mind the texture that I'm trying to describe in that particular area. So for example, if I have a plant that has more kind of upwards leaves uh, going up in an upwards direction, I use upwards brush strokes. And in the trees, maybe when I'm activating that color, I'm using more of a scribbling motion and so on and so forth. All right, so I finished up with that activation of color with my paintbrush and my bit of water there. I allowed everything to dry. It's super important that I make sure that everything is completely dry before working on this last part of my process, which is going to be to go back in one last time with my watercolor pencils. And this time I am going to be focusing on developing texture and pushing darkest dark areas. So this time I'm only going to be doing layering in dark shadow areas or sections where elements are overlapping on top of each other, creating a shadow on each other. And I'm also focusing on describing texture using different types of lines and marks. You're also going to see me finally add in the tree trunks and branches and tree trunks and branches are something that I would often leave until the end for this kind of piece because they are more like lines and not so much shapes. And so because they're lines, I'm leaving them until the very end. This time I am not going to be activating that pigment and I'm just gonna make use of the sketchy, uh, more drawing types of textures that watercolor pencils allow. I'm using different types of lines and marks depending on what it is that I am working on. Sometimes I'm using upwards flicking motions like for the grass and this plant closer to us in the foreground. And I'm also using scribbling motions for other plant sections and also the trees. I'm making sure that as I am doing all of this, I'm keeping everything very irregular. I don't want any patterns anywhere or any stiffness because this is a natural scene. Okay, so that is basically the process that I went through to create this piece. I now want to share five main tips with you that are really gonna help you arrive at more successful results when combining watercolor paint with watercolor pencils. 
Tip number one is going to be to make time to break up your composition into parts or layers and make sure that you're going in with some sort of strategy in terms of what it would make sense to work on first and then what it would make sense to work on next and how are you going to be moving on through the process. When we're combining different mediums, like we're doing when we're combining watercolor paint with watercolor pencils, it's so, so important to give thought to when you're going to be bringing in each and how much you're going to be doing with each in order to arrive at the results that you're going for. Many times we don't give thought to this and we end up making the process much harder for ourselves or end up overdoing the piece and just over describing with both mediums. Also, how much layering are you thinking of doing with each? Ask yourself all of these things and go in with a strategy and then try your best to stick with that strategy. Tip number two is to plan the colors that you're gonna be going in with, with both mediums, both the watercolor paint as well as the watercolor pencils. So if you've checked any of my past full tutorials on either watercolor paint or watercolor pencils, you probably already know that I'm a huge, huge proponent for making sure that you know what colors you're gonna be going in with, especially as a beginner. Make sure that you pre-select your colors, that you make time to swatch out your colors, as well as any colors that you're gonna be mixing together so that you avoid any accidents and undesired muddiness. Ask yourself how you're gonna be creating darker value areas. Oftentimes we overlap different colors in dark value areas. In past tutorials, I've shared how I personally go about picking my colors using reference photos or things I have in front of me in real life. But even if you're going for a more expressive, unnatural use of colors, make sure that you plan your colors and swatch them out and mix them if you're gonna be doing it in your piece before getting started so that you can avoid unnecessary accidents. Tip number three is make sure that you're choosing the right paper to work on. So if you're gonna be bringing in any amount of water, you wanna make sure that you're using a paper that is intended for water-soluble mediums, like watercolor paper. And if you're gonna be bringing in traditional watercolor paint as opposed to just watercolor pencils, this means that you're probably gonna be bringing in more water than you would if you were just using watercolor pencils. So I would recommend using at least 140 pound paper in thickness, so a mid-weight to heavier weight paper. And as I explained in the past watercolor pencil guide for beginners, I talk about how important it is to just take into account that the heavier the tooth or the texture of the paper, the more texture you're gonna end up with. So always make sure to take into consideration how thick that paper is and how textured that paper is because both of these are gonna have a great impact on both your painting process as well as your final outcome. Tip number four is going to be to make sure that you are integrating the whiteness and the lightness of the paper under that paint and allow it to help you develop lighter value areas and bring a lightness and glow to your piece. This is something that I always have in mind when I'm using traditional watercolor paint, but also watercolor pencils. It's very easy to keep adding and adding pigment and then end up with something that looks very flat and very heavy if we don't plan to integrate that paper as part of the piece and use that lightness to help us create lighter values, have that paper showing from under that paint. And the way that you do it is by using a less amount of pigment or less layering in these areas. So you can see how in this case, I created a balance between lighter value areas in which the paper is really showing through, that paint is laid down, in a very thin way and I have balanced that out with other sections in which that color is more saturated, it's more layered. And finally, tip number five is going to be to give thought to what areas you want to develop a less amount of texture and maybe more blurred out effects in and which areas you want to develop a greater amount of detail and texture in.
Because watercolor pencils allow for more control and more precision because of those tips, you could really consider using watercolor pencils in sections where you want to create a greater amount of texture, more definition, or are simply going to be adding more detail and balancing that out with sections that are not going to have that much detail. This way you can use the strengths of both mediums in a way that is going to help you arrive at an interesting and balanced result. All right, you guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I really hope that you found some helpful nuggets in it, that you found it inspiring. And if you did, pretty, pretty please, I'd super appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up and share with family or friends who you think would find it helpful as well. That really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and allows others to get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe so that I can see you next week for another video and keep on creating. Bye guys.